The forest in French Guiana is a natural El Dorado. Its biodiversity includes hundreds of thousands of species. It's one of the last Edens on Earth. Its surface area is equal to a sixth of the size of France. It represents 5% of the Amazon rainforest. But while the Amazon's ecosystems have suffered from human presence on the other side of its borders, the rainforest in French Guiana still looks the same as when Christopher Columbus landed here. But today, Guiana's forest has hit a turning point in its age-old history, currently undergoing an unprecedented demographic explosion. Will it suffer the same tragic fate as the Amazon rainforest? Or will mankind come up with solutions in time to enjoy its treasures and preserve this precious Eden? For scientists, the priority is understanding how the rainforest functions before it's too late. The density of all these trees and the luxuriance of this damp tropical rainforest with its rich biodiversity can be explained by the amount of energy the forest receives from the sun, of course, along with all the rain that falls to the ground. These elements are very important for photosynthesis and tree growth. We could think of the forest as a kind of building with different stories. The first level on the ground is characterized mainly by soil litter, palm trees, and new young trees, and the animal life, in particular insects and mosquitoes. The second floor is the realm of tree trunks, a realm with relatively little light, so there are a few branches on the trunks. The third floor of our building is the canopy. This is where we find the interface between the sun, atmosphere and forest. The canopy greatly limits the amount of light that reaches the ground. And only about 1% of the sun's rays make it through to the ground. The canopy also ensures that heavy rains don't erode the ground too quickly. So the canopy, with its structure, contributes to maintaining the ecosystem. The canopy is the realm of at least 800 varieties of birds and mammals, such as toucans, capuchin, and howler monkeys. Each plays a vital role in the equilibrium of the forest. By ingesting fruit from the trees and distributing seeds through their excrement, they ensure plant biodiversity, which is the foundation of the food chain. But far below on the ground, it's a different world altogether. Very few human eyes have ever witnessed what happens there after dark. To learn more about the inhabitants of this mysterious realm and understand its biodiversity, Cecile Richard Hansen, engineer with the ONCFS, the National Office of Hunting and Wildlife, plays detective using a system that is as ingenious as it's harmless. We set up an initial camera trap that was mainly to get to know all the biodiversity on the site. We got over 80,000 photos of at least 30-some different species, some of which are 
For instance, there are these curassows, one of the species we're studying, a large earth-dwelling wildfowl. Here's a very rare species, the giant armadillo, which is rarely seen in Guiana. Some animals are quite frequent on the site. The giant anteater, which has found our equipment and is smelling it. Another anteater with a baby on her back. Our famous peccaries that we've now begun studying and capturing to mark them. Jaguar is most likely a female with her adolescent cub approaching, a cougar that looks like it's posing. There's quite a few big cats in this zone, a pair of amardillas mating. Once again, something that's quite extraordinary because it's a rare species. The result of these photo campaigns helped us decide on this area as a study zone and to undertake real capture operations, trapping the animals and fitting them with GPS collars to understand their movements and improve wildlife management in French Guiana. Researchers are fascinated by two species that are key to Guiana's ecosystem. First, the peccary, a prey enjoyed both by wildcats and humans. But its biorhythms are still greatly unknown. Cécile Richard Hansen built large pens to catch these creatures that move in herds. Awara fruit makes excellent bait. This species has suffered huge losses here without any explanation. There were numerous around 2002, but now there's hardly any left, and no one knows why. We see this trend in several areas of the Amazon. We need to learn about peccary biology, and that's the goal of the ONCFS. The other species concerned lies at the other end of the food chain one of the peccary's major predators, the jaguar. This rare creature is a good gauge of the health of the undergrowth. Using the cries of a female in heat and those of frightened prey, biologist Rachel Berzins and veterinarian Chloe Rodrigue have laid a jaguar trap. The males are solitary and one must be clever to outmaneuver their suspicious nature. The goal of our operation is to try to capture big cats, notably jaguars. They're lured by the sound recordings we've placed near the trap. The jaguar places its paws right where we want, and the trap's triggered when it puts its paw here. We make rounds every four hours, so the jaguar isn't stuck in an uncomfortable position for too long. Once the animal has been trapped, we come to see and carry out all the procedures to fit it with the collar and so on. Then once the anesthesia has worn off, we set it free about an hour later. Human activity is slowly encroaching on the jaguar's territory because there's more and more deforestation and more and more livestock farming. Jaguars are losing their habitat, so the long-term goal is to help them continue to coexist peacefully along with man. This small patch of jungle is only a tiny sample of the extraordinary wildlife that has burgeoned here since time immemorial, far from human eyes. And though hunting is becoming a problem elsewhere in the forest, the creatures here have nothing to fear. Yeah. 